There was a study done at the University of Chicago. They took three groups of people, had them do free throws. Researchers will have a subject look at a dog that comes into the laboratory and see what parts of their brain light up. There was a study done at Appalachian State University and they said, when's the best time to exercise? Keeping your brain alive and keeping it active is also important for your health, you know, your energy, your vitality, steering away brain fog. There was a study on the cover of Time Magazine called Super Nuns, and it was all about these group of women who were living well into their 80s, their 90s, and even above 100. And the researchers wanted to find out how they're living so long. And they've discovered that half of it had to do with their faith and their gratitude, but the other had, half had to do with how much learning they were doing their entire lifetime, that they were so engaged in deep conversations, they were reading a lot, they were doing puzzles, and keeping your brain alive not only added years to their life, but it actually added life to their years. I was interviewed recently for a New York Times bestselling book called Use Your Brain to Change Your Age, where it really documented and talked about a lot of our training that actually helped people live longer lives. You know, there was a study um, done at Harvard University by Dr. Ellen Langer, and in 1979, she was visiting a senior center and noticed, like, this isn't necessarily the best place, environment, this particular place, for people to spend their last years. And she took eight of the guys out and put them into a monastery. And uh, d here's the thing, though. Before she put them in, she decorated the monastery as if it was 20 years earlier, like it was 1959. The television was black and white with 1959 television programming, Time Magazine 19, from 1959. And before she put them in, she measured all of their attributes. She tested their physical strength. She tested their dexterity. She tested their flexibility. She, they test, she tested their senses, their sense of sight, their sense of hearing. They also tested their cognitive uh, fitness. They wanted to test their focus. She tested their memory. And, and she gave them instructions saying, when you go in there for just seven days, just one week when you're living in there, I want you to imagine and pretend it's 1959. She took all the mirrors out so they couldn't see themselves, right? And these guys would go out from the van, and many of them were on canes, and they would go in, and they just pretended it was like 1959. She followed up seven days later, took them out, and these guys, a lot of those who walked in with canes, didn't walk out with canes. This is a well-published study. It's called the Counterclockwise Study. Counterclockwise out of Harvard. And she measured everybody's uh, assessment. They were physically stronger in just seven days. They had more flexibility and more dexterity. They, their sense of sight was better after just seven days. Their sense of hearing was improved. And when it comes down to you know, my world, the cognitive performance, they had better focus and a better memory. The mind doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. But I'm going to share with you speed study secrets to cut your studying time while getting better results by studying smart, not just hard. I want you to stop multitasking. That's right, stop multitasking. Many of you believe that you're doing two things at once or three things at once, and you're not actually multitasking because every single time you switch from one task to another, you have to regain your focus and your flow. And it can take anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. So the more accurate term is not multitasking. It's actually called task switching but it takes more time, it's less productive, and there's more errors. There was a study done at University of London saying it can even lower your IQ. Multitasking or attempting to multitask can even lower your IQ, similar that if you stayed up to all night. If you stayed up all night, it could actually drop up to 15 points. So I want you to do one single mental thing at a time. So stop multitasking. There was a study done at University of Chicago. They took th three groups of people, had them do free throws. And then they said, okay, group A, and for the next 30 days, I want you to practice an hour a day. Group B, I don't want you to practice at all. Group C, I want you to practice, but don't touch a ball, don't go out on the court, just practice in your mind, like you're successfully throwing free throws for an hour a day. They followed up 30 days later, measured group A, put them back on the court, improved 24%. Amazing, right? Practice makes progress. Practice makes progress, right? Group B, Exactly the same, no practice, no progress. Group C, that just practiced in their mind, it blew their mind, improved 23%.
just 1% less than people that did tw actually put on the court. That's the power of your imagination. The human brain doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. Have you ever had a very intense dream that wakes you up and your heart's beating out of your chest or maybe you have trouble breathing? That's because the mind doesn't know the difference between, again, something vividly imagined and something that's real. Researchers will have a subject look at a dog that comes into the laboratory and see what parts of their brain light up. Then they'll take the dog out and give them an assignment saying, I want you to visualize a dog coming into the laboratory and just imagine it, and they'll see what parts of their brain lights up, and what do you think happens? The same part of their brain lights up. How do you get unstuck? I want you to do a thought experiment with me for just one moment. I want you to think about an area of your life. It could be in your career, it could be in your relationships, it could be in your health, it can be in your day-to-day, -day. an area where you feel like you're being held back that you haven't made any kind of new progress. There was a study done at the University of Berman in Norway that said there's a direct correlation between those who with a positive mental attitude, they were an optimist, and more creative flexibility, more output of divergent thinking, more creative ideas. And you know this, right? When you're in a good mood, you come up with more ideas as opposed to when you're singularly focused or you're in stress or fight or flight, the ideas don't flow. So the first tip is to uplift yourself, monitor your state, because as we've talked about, all learning and creativity is state dependent. You don't have creativity, you do creativity, and part of it is understanding your state. So here are two quick tips to get better sleep so you can improve your memory. You know, when you sleep, you consolidate short to long-term memory. It's also where you clean up plaque that can lead to brain aging challenges. Also, it's where you dream, you come up with some amazing ideas. And so how can you get better sleep for a better memory? Here are two quick tips. When you first wake up, go outside. If it's at all possible, go outside and get some direct sunlight. Even if it's hazy, what it does is helps reset your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm is that 24 hour clock that you have, and that will help support better sleep at night. And stack it while you're outside, the second brain tip, do three or four minutes of exercise. There was a study done at Appalachian State University, and they said, when's the best time to exercise? And they put three groups of people, they had some exercising at 7 a.m., 1 p.m., and 7 p.m., morning, afternoon, and evening. And they found those that did their exercise, it doesn't mean they have to be their full exercise routine, even just for three or four minutes, maybe some jumping jacks, calisthenics, um, some burpees, push-ups. If they did it in the morning, what happens is uh, they'll actually get, up, some subjects got upwards of 75% deeper sleep. And so go outside, get some direct sunlight, and while you're out there, do some exercise. The fresh air and sunlight will be good for your body as well as your brain, and you'll get a better night's sleep.